Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Alan Clark from the Palmer Wall Instrumentation Group. We're going to uh, go through some uh, thermal imaging applications. These are just some uh, comments and studies and some pictures to let you think about different things that you encounter each day in your work, maybe on sales calls or with customer calls that you're interested in maybe pursuing with, uh, with a thermal camera or offering a thermal camera to those customers to solve some problems. The benefits of thermal imaging is you, it allows you to locate problems quickly without interrupting service. Things like live electrical circuits, spinning motors, things like that you can't touch while they're running, but you can stand back and look at them with a camera and you see an overall view of potential heating problems, overheating circuits, potential things that could cause a fire or a shutdown. You can drastically reduce costly unscheduled power outages by finding electrical problems before they fail or a motor uh, causing a seize up with the overheated bearing. Minimizes your predictive maintenance time and, and maximize troubleshooting effectiveness by having a, an imager there to find problems and then also to come back and check those problems after they're fixed to see if they're really fixed. Prevent premature failure and extend equipment life. Identify potentially dangerous and hazardous equipment that you don't want employees around. Verify repair work that it's done and then Reduce insurance premiums on some applications. Some of the school systems in various states, which were having their electrical systems annually inspected, said that they would reduce insurance uh, mounts if they would do it once a month instead of once a year. Potential fire problems. The uh, power related problems cause U.S. companies in excess of $30 billion a year in lost time and revenue. That can be anything from a major power outage a substation from the generating plant to simple circuits blowing in your plant or shutting down part of your equipment. The average building can ex expect about 106 electrical disturbances a month. Most of those are minor. There might be a switch in the back corner of the plant. Could be a transformer outside the plant that blows and shuts down the entire plant. But a one hour electrical outage can cost an estimated $1,437 to small businesses and over 88% of owners have one to six outages a year. Insurance companies recognize these issues and will make adjustments if you do your own thermal scanning with a, a camera to minimize these issues. Improperly torqued connections and bad contacts. By over tightening a bolt you can warp the washers which reduces the surface area the current flows through and that will cause the smaller surface carrying the same load to get hot. The following equipment in order of uh, failure is uh, ranked by loss claims and this accounts for most of the common equipment breakdowns and exposures in every business and organization. First is electrical, then air conditioning and refrigeration, boilers, pressure vessels and piping, machinery, computer equipment, motors including air conditioning, pumps and telecommunications. These are the issues in electrical equipment that cause the most fires. The most common is switches, either air or oil cooled. Um, those are generally inside of transformers, air or oil cooled uh, switches are both kinds of transformers. The oil level gets too low, the oil uh, cooled uh, switches will overheat and blow. Uh, cables, motors, switch gear, circuit breakers, controllers, generators, switchboards, and transformers. This is a picture of a large transformer in a big plant in Missouri. This uh, thing had a problem. They could have caught it with a thermal camera, but it overheated and exploded. Had a big fire. Uh, they did have a, a spare transformer on site, but still the uh, they were down for 15 days. Estimated loss: 15 million property damage, or fi 3 million property damage, 2 million business interruption. If they had not had the spare transformer, they'd had to wait about 24 months to get a replacement. With and without a predictive maintenance schedule, these are the percent of failures. The red bar indicates with no predictive maintenance uh, program in place. The blue bar is with a predictive maintenance program in place. And you can see a great deal of uh, reduction in cost and time problems and maintenance problems with a, a program that you're looking for a problem before it happens rather than wait till it fails. These are just some numbers for the types of uh, costs per different types of uh, manufacturing and 
technology. We're gonna, not going to go through each one of them, but in the end result, there's as an average of all of the different uh, areas involved. The studies uh, by the Federal Energy Management Program estimate a properly functioning predictive maintenance program can provide a savings of 30 to 40 percent over reactive maintenance where it's allowed to go until it fails. You can get a, for instance, on a thermal camera, you can get a return on investment of probably 10 times or more. Reduction in maintenance cost, 25 to 30 percent. Elimination of breakdowns, 70 to 75 percent. Reduction in downtime, 35 to 45 percent. And increase in production, 20 to 25 percent. The thermal camera can provide a means of converting an infrared energy, which is invisible to the human eye, into meaningful data and temperatures that will let you see components that are in various states of failure that are overheating due to that failure and catch them before they totally fail. Uh, the, the additional energy caused by friction in mechanical devices and resistance in electrical devices is what generates this heat. We talked about the elevator torque con connections. Uh, they will cause a problem and a fire eventually if you have enough current going through an improperly torqued connection or a loose connection. These are some uh, switches, fuses, uh, the breakers in a normal electrical box. Uh, the picture on the right is in black and white, grayscale it's called. That's the normal image that a camera sees. The other two are in color because people like color, so the microprocessor in a camera will add colors and there are several color palettes to choose from, which you will see as we go through. This uh, particular palette is called Iron Bow. Uh, keep in mind that generally uh, all the palettes, except for a couple, cold is dark, light is hot. Hundreds of different components make up an electrical system. Transformers, bushings, disconnects, switch gear, breakers, meters, power distribution panels, grounding systems, surge arresters, and so on. Using a th predictive maintenance program using thermography will help reduce impending electrical problems by saving costly downtime and wasted energy that's just being dissipated as heat. These are a couple of fuses in a panel. You can see the connections are uh, hot. The issue is how hot are they? And we will get into a chart a little later to tell you uh, if what to do with certain differential temperatures compared to other like circuits. This is uh, transformer bushings outside. In the right picture is the thermal picture. You'll see a little hot spot on one of the connections. This could potentially be a very bad overheating circuit. If it's a windy day, it will blow most of that heat away and you won't see very much. If it's a still day, then you will see uh, the true nature of the failure, the failure that's impending. So try to take your outside thermal pictures on still, calm days. Use some high voltage fuse again outside. You can see the one on the left is much hotter than the other two like it. These are some bus bars, one is hotter than the other. Substation switches, you can see a hot connection there on the picture on the right in the center. These are just some fluorescent light ballasts in our plant. This is a three phase electrical circuit. You can take the imager and manually adjust the temperature span you're looking at. As you move the span up, it's uh, to see higher and higher temperatures. The two normal circuits, sides of the circuit, will start to darken and only the overheating circuit will stand out. These are some substation switches that I shot at a uh, Seattle City Power out in Seattle. There's nothing hot in these pictures. Everything's normal. Uh, one thing to point out is in the background you see black. Black is the sky, it's cold. Uh, the blue is clouds, this is a partially overcast winter day. These are some uh, substation pictures. There's nothing really abnormal in these. The only thing I would watch out for in these pictures, the lower left picture, there's a couple of circuits that are starting to get a little warm. They're not hot right now, abnormally hot but I would make a notation if I was the technician that um, watched these for later. Again, more substation pictures. Nothing out unusually hot, but there are some that are a little bit hotter than the others. Just again, additional things to watch. Same here, some more connections. 
Some are a little warmer than the other light connections, and you can just put them down to monitor them. This is a different palette uh, on the lower left. This is a green, red, rainbow. Different people like different colors, so it just gives you a choice. Again, a few circuits that are starting to overheat. They're not really bad yet, but uh, they will bear watching in the future. Again, some more uh, circuits, different colors. The one to really watch is the picture in the lower right. This is a transformer uh, housing. This is a metal housing outside. You can see a very hot spot on the housing. That means it's really hot inside. Uh, in fact, this particular picture, they said they checked, the, they took the cover off of it and checked the circuits and it was 1100 degrees on some of the circuits inside and the aluminum was melting. But if you walk up to something like that and you see a hot spot and you hear it buzzing, get away from it quickly. Because this may be what happens. You can have an arc flash and a plasma ball will come right through that cabinet wall. If somebody had been standing in front of this particular one, they would probably have been killed. Another one arc flash inside of a motor control cabinet and it came right through the side. People who work around these high voltage equipment like this and open up these uh, cabinets generally wear a very heavy suit uh, set forth by the National Fire Protection Association. It's like uh, the suits the bomb squad wears. In that case, if a plasma ball hits them, it'll just knock them down, but it won't burn them. This is a picture of a cover of a cabinet. It wasn't abnormally hot by feel, but uh, the camera showed some potential problems. And they decided to open it up, look inside. This was what was happening. There were circuits over 400 degrees. They were beginning to burn. The insulation is melting and running down. So this is going to be a fire. These are a couple of transformers outside in substations. The uh, one on the left, you see a couple of the tubes. These are oil circulation tubes for cooling. One of the tubes there is uh, dark. That means the oil is not circulating through it. It's blocked. The whited out uh, areas, we have the camera manually set for a certain temperature span. And anything above that span will be what's called, uh, it's just uh, it's out of the range of the camera, so what we see, so it's whited out. The Anything outside of the camera range on the lower end would be black. The one on the right is a good transformer. It's operating normally. This is just a water cooling tower at this, uh, in the communications tower at this plant. And I put this in because the dark in the background, the black is the sky, blue clouds, but you also see some red clouds. And that means that there's a heat source. It could be lighting or a plant below it that's generating heat reflecting off of those clouds. So you need to keep in mind that reflections all around you are affecting what you're seeing. This is an ASTM chart for abnormalities. Uh, if you're looking at circuits in a panel, these are differential temperatures and what to do about them. So if you have hot circuits that appear hotter than the others and they're only 5 or 10, 20 degrees difference, it's really not a problem, but if you get down to the point that there's a 65 degree or greater differential, then you need to correct immediately or you're going to have a fire. In mechanical devices, abnormal heating is associated with possible failure. There's a lot of things in a plant, belt driven motors, um, shaft driven motors, uh, pulleys, generators, uh, variable speed drives, so on, and all of these have potential for overheating. This is a uh, belt driven generator. The uh, belt is uh, running a little bit hot. This was caused by a misalignment of the belt and it would, uh, was, the friction was causing heating on the belt which will shorten its life. If the belts are also over tightened, they will put additional heating on the bearings and they'll wear the bearings out. This is a couple of motors that the shafts are misaligned. So it puts a great strain on one side so the Ones that are light are overheating that bearings under tremendous strain because of shaft misalignment. The other sides are okay, but eventually that bearing that's overheating will fail. Remember, light is hot, dark is cold. These are a couple more defective bearings in a different uh, palette. This is a rainbow, green, red, rainbow. 
Uh, the white is the hot area there. These bearings are going to fail. It can be defective bearings or lack of lubrication. The picture on the left, there's a motor behind a protective cage. You see one of them on the left is operating normally, but the motor on the right is hot. Could be, again, improper lubrication or a dragging bearing. The one on the right is an uh, overheating motor. The difference in the picture backgrounds is the way the operator had the camera set up. You can set the camera up to uh, kind of put the background the way you want. Boiler and kiln equipment checks. Boiler and kilns are lined with fire brick to insulate the, the steel housing to protect it. If you thin that up, uh, eventually it'll burn through and it'll burn through the wall of the steel housing. So also as uh, ladle and kettle checks for things like molten steel, those are also lined with fire brick because the molten steel will burn through the steel walls of the kettles and ladles if they're not uh, protected by fire brick. This is a boiler. It's got a uh, hot spot there in the center. If the fire brick is not replaced inside that, it will burn a hole through the wall of that boiler. This is a ladle and a steel mill. You'll see these typically on large conveyors uh, moving across a plant above people that are walking below them. Uh, if the fire brick is not replaced in that, where the hot spots are, the, the red and the white, eventually it will burn through and the molten steel will come through the wall of that ladle. These are cement kilns. They're quite uh, common in Texas and Missouri and out in that area. They're uh, turning, mixing cement and, and baking it. And those are also lined with fire brick. The picture on the right is a uh, kiln inside of a building. Uh, there are windows there, but there's no glass in the windows. This is in Enos, Texas. And the picture, the window on the left of that picture, that's a normal temperature for properly lined uh, part of the kiln. The hot spots, the white and extreme yellows, are going to need replacing soon. This is some uh, piping in a refinery. There's a leak running under the insulation and, and running out. Normally, you would have to strip the insulation off of that pipe until you find the leak. With a thermal camera, wet insulation doesn't work, so the camera can find the leak for quickly. The source of it and that part can be replaced, and the other insulation will probably dry out and be okay. These are pictures of several tanks. The levels of the tank can be seen with a the thermal camera. This needs to be done early in the morning or late in the afternoon as uh, the sun shining on the side of the tank will heat it up and mask the differentials. But what you're looking at is the differential of the mass inside versus the air that's above it. The left tank and the upper left, someone's poured something hot uh, down a tube in it. You can see the track down the side of the tank and then it's on top of whatever else is in the tank. The middle tank, you can see the air above the right, two tall tanks. Uh, that's the level of fill there. The right upper tank, you have a big sludge build up in that tank. It needs cleaning out, and that's obvious. In the bottom one, uh, there's the air above the something warm being put into whatever's below, both the thermal and the digital image. Process control, there's a lot of ways of monitoring with a camera to find problem areas. We get better products such as in paper, glass, plastic, thermal molding, packaging, food processing, and many other applications. This is uh, manufacturing fluorescent light tubes. Once the uh, tubes are molded, uh, they need to cool down uniformly to keep them from cracking once the connections are put into them. This is a roll of paper. It's got some wet streaks on it, so they need to find what's causing those wet streaks before it uh, destroyed too much paper. These are uh, steel pipes. So these particular pipes are about 24 inches in diameter and they put a, an energy source that uh, flashes a big uh, energy source inside the pipe and the camera will pick up defects from outside in the walls of the pipe. You see your cookies coming out of a conveyor oven. They're looking for uniform bake across the conveyor. This can be done with a camera or a single point fixed IR with different points on the conveyor. We're also used a lot of automotive applications, tire contact patches, racing suspension development, brake and engine system performance, cooling efficiency issues, 
uh, faulty fuel injection nozzles. This is a uh, tire that we took some pictures of. Uh, BMW and Michelin Tire have big facilities close to us. And this was a tire that we're running on the track. And you can see the outer edge, the red part, is, is hot compared to the center of the tire. So they either need to make some changes in their suspension or change inflation pressures on the tire. This is a cast aluminum wheel. It's important you get a good uniform casting temperature or you can have flaws that will crack under load later on. These are uh, heating elements in a car seat. He, the one on the left uh, right seat there is uh, heated up. The left seat, which is on your right, is you can see you'll see the heating elements in the seat even though they're not on. Um, We sell a lot of these cameras to the to Droid. So this is uh, doing a when the defroster test, as if we're getting a uniform heating across the defro uh, across the windshield. HVC applications, heating and ventilation, air conditioning equipment, cold storage, insulation leaks, and refrigeration equipment. Technicians can find hot spots and early detection to save the, a lot of times the cost of the instrument and time to make the measurements. On the left is a air conditioning leak. Remember cold is dark, light is hot. In the hotter areas in the summertime, people don't want to have to give it up in the attic and crawl along the duct to check all the joints for leakage. They can just stick their head up in the attic and scan around. You guys would be here. And um, we can do um, the, uh, get the cold temperatures at the junction leak quickly without having to turn uh, or crawl along the duct. The right picture is a diffuser that's leaking. It's closed, but it's still leaking. This is air conditioning condenser core. You can see that there's uh, one of the lines is plugged up in it. So you can find those uh, problem areas as well as heavy equipment, trucks, tractors, uh, radiator problems on the heavy equipment. Next thing is building envelopes. A lot of emphasis these days on energy management. We're looking to uh, find out where there are conductive and convective heat losses in buildings for energy management. Also find poor construction, missing insulation, moisture intrusion. And roofing, we're looking for uh, wet uh, roofs and uh, membranes on flat roofs. They'll trap water in the membranes when there's a flaw. Moisture restoration in buildings, you can find water leaks in walls, roof leaks, um, you can find leaky water pipes in the walls, and then also mold remediation caused by this moisture. This is a building with the conductive heat loss uh, parameters outlined in orange here. These are the walls to be concerned about, exterior walls where you can lose energy to the outside. Here's a picture from inside of a cafeteria in an industrial plant. It's a uh, cold day outside. The metal framing is transmitting the cold from the outside in, but you see no cold spots in between, so the insulation is working. This is missing insulation in a house. Uh, cold is coming in, there's no insulation in that area. This is a building uh, with uh, the You'll see an A and B in the picture. Main, main interest in this was the thermal windows. The A window on the left is uh, not as tight as the ones on the right. Uh, they're getting more energy loss to it. But of, another concern is right below the window on the left, you will see a light spot in the wall, which indicates thin insulation. This is the envelope area we're concerned with on convective heat loss. You can have very good insulation in the building, yet you can still have 50% energy loss through convective leaks, all the little holes where the air is moving through your building. This is hot air infiltrating through a wall. Uh, remember, light is hot, cold is dark. This is they're having carpet put down, and uh, they took a check with the camera, and you can see the heat coming in under the baseboard. Missing insulation in places or improperly installed insulation. This is a membrane roof on a flat uh, roof building. There's moisture trapped underneath the top membrane. 
The moisture heats and cools at a different rate than the surrounding dry area, so it will stand out. Another uh, area of wet insulation, letting uh, the heat through. This is an area on a roof that uh, the sun's coming up on it and heating it up. This is uh, mid-morning. All the area around this dark spot is normal, no leak, but there's water trapped under the membrane on the dark spot and it will heat at a much slower rate, so it'll appear to be cold for a while. These are window water leaks. Uh, the camera will find them and where the water is going to and how much of an area you have to deal with. In the left picture, there's some uh, moisture problems that have not yet shown up as stains on the walls. Could be a re leaky roof, could be a wall leaking, could be a gutter that's uh, not draining properly and, and causing water to, to run into to the wall. On the right, we have mold issues. Apparently there's a water leak in the wall, the lower right corner of the picture is very wet down there, but these are uh, areas where mold is growing on the wall. In many parts of the country, they use heated floors. In the Northeast, it's quite common to heat houses with radiant heat in the floors. In the Rocky Mountains, it's, uh, they put in water pipes in the garages and driveways to keep snow and ice off of them. It appears uh, in the center of the picture, there might be a small water leak because it's kind of uh, all red out there. So there's probably some moisture leaking in there. It also allows you to know if you need to repair the floor, where not to cut. Uh, insects can build nests in the walls of your house. This is in a garage wall. Insects are cold-blooded and you can't find tracks of insects in walls, but you can find where their nests are. They have to generate heat to uh, hatch their eggs. And the uh, person who took this picture put their handprint on the wall as a reference point and the handprint will stay there for a couple of minutes. Uh, a lot of uh, people are using uh, these things for product development and also increase a lot reliability of their products. You can find hot spots in uh, products that you're building and take care of it before you actually go into production. We just sold uh, thermal imaging cameras to Sirius XM radio for development of their printed circuit boards. They were looking for individual components, heat versus other components on the board. And here's a circuit board uh, that some developments going on, some pictures from that. This is a resistance heating element. You want to make sure that you get a good even uh, current flow across it so that the heating is even. This is a couple of buildings on a, a utility training site in Spokane, Washington. There are gas turbines there and it appears that the uh, there's nothing happening, but when you take a thermal image of it, you can see one is running and one is not. This is an interesting picture. I took it at a show I did in Modesto, California, where we were outside in a big tent. This is, uh, in the lower part, you will see some white spots. Those are the heads of people in the room. But this is the side of the tent wall, the inside of the wall. The camera will only see the image of the surface of the wall, does not see through it. But there is a tree on the other side that's blocking the sunlight, so you see the cooling effect of the tree's image on the uh, tent wall itself. So thermal imaging applications continue to expand. People find all kinds of new things to use them on. So yeah, thermal imaging is a solution looking for a temperature problem. There's all kinds of other issues out there. We get uh, not so many anymore. We used to get at least one or two calls a week for people looking for ghosts. So we asked the question, could it be? We really don't believe in that stuff, but some people do. And if, they, if we can't discourage them and they want to buy the camera, we'll certainly sell them one. So that's all, folks. Until next time, any questions out there?